Hey guys, so we're going to take a look at Sonic the Hedgehog on the Sega Mega Drive, the game that started all. All the good times and all the many, many, many not so good times. <laughs> but of course on the front here we have Sonic the Hedgehog, I believe this is the same render from the front of the Japanese box. Uh, very beautifully drawn and you know, really exemplifies why I love the classic Sonic design. He's got a lot of uh, sort of Mickey Mouse charm to him. And uh, but it's, it's a very nice piece of artwork. But then in the background, we've kind of got these really simple line drawings of like, a, there's a Flicky, uh, there's a bunny rabbit animal, uh, and of course there is a very cartoonish looking Robotnik. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of all in this weird, I don't know what you'd say exactly, creamy sort of colour. Very weird box design. I, I, personally, I much prefer the American one, which has, uh, which is just a beautiful piece of artwork all around. But, you know, obviously it did the trick because Sonic has always been incredibly popular in the power regions. Alrighty, on the side, of course, we have our Sonic the Hedgehog logo, and we have our Sega Mega Drive logo, and of course, the Sega Hints and Tips hotline number. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where the number is for, I don't know if that's supposed to be for Australia, or uh, this might be a UK copy. But, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then on the back, of course, one player, 16-bit cartridge. So, of course, 16-bit was all the rage, and the box does a pretty good job of showing off why the 16-bit graphics was so much nicer than... You know, certainly anything that was on the NES. You know, Sonic the Hedgehog looked amazing when it came out. Bust the video game speed barrier wide open with Sonic the Hedgehog. Not in the PAL version, I'm afraid. Of course, the PAL version has a lot of slowdown. But I do love the, uh, you know, blaze by in a blur using the supersonic spin attack. Loop the, uh, loop the loop, not loop de loop, uh, by defying gravity. Well, I mean, I guess loop the loop is actually the translation. You can even spin around in a 360 degree rotating maze. You've never seen anything like it. Yeah, I don't think I'd be touting Sonic 1's special stages as a feature of the game, but anyway. So of course this being a Mega Drive case, we it's uh, really just the same as a VHS tape case for anyone that, uh, that's watching my channel that's old enough to remember that. Uh, I know that I get a lot of younger viewers. Okay, so on the cartridge here we have Sonic. And uh, basically it's the same artwork from front cover, it's all pretty standard and uh, not that interesting, although the colouring is a bit different because of the printing job. And on the back we've just got the usual stuff, Sega made in Japan, uh, usual caution, <laughs> avoid exposing cartridge to extreme temperature, be careful not to immerse cartridge in water. For protection when cartridge is not in use, place cartridge inside protective plastic case. Naturally, <laughs> pretty bit common sense stuff. We have an ad for the Sega Club. So, of course, another picture of Sonic, that actually looks very much like Sat AM Sonic, uh, to me. Just with the way his spines are drawn, so I, d I don't know, maybe this was a bit of a later release. But Sonic says, join the official Sega Club. Fill out the form on the back and you'll start receiving the benefits of being a Sega head. For only $20 a year, wow! So you get your very own Club Mag, Sega Zone. Uh, brilliant Sega t-shirt. Uh, special offers and exclusive competitions. And unlimited use of the SEGA hotline! Wow! <laughs> I love all these old 90s ads. Very, uh, I, I remember a lot of these sort of things. <laughs> uh, so of course we have an ad for the SEGA Mega Drive, a little bit hard to show off here. But ad for the SEGA Mega Drive, which is the hottest console available in Australia. Okay, so this must be an Australian copy then. <laughs> Master System Software Adapter available. So of course you can play Master System games. But we've got Ghouls and Ghosts, uh, which was of course from an arcade, which uh, which was well originally an arcade game, which uh, Sega were keen to promote. Alien Storm, uh, Golden Axe, Super Monaco GP. Let's see if I can show you this any better. Uh, Castle of Illusion, Mickey Mouse, The Immortal, uh, Shadow of the Beast. Oh, sorry, actually, yeah, arcade was probably the genre, I imagine. Although I, I wouldn't really classify Ghouls and Ghosts as an arcade-style game. Uh, John Madden Football, of course. Wonder Boy 3 Monster Lair. Uh, poor Wonder Boy. And, of course, Sonic the Hedgehog, the hottest ever Sega game. Out on Mega Drive, Master System, and Game Gear. Not that you necessarily want to play the Game Gear version. <laughs> if you don't have a Mega Drive yet, one look at Sonic will make you want to get one. That was basically their entire marketing slogan, as far as I can tell. Oh, and we also have an ad for the Sega Master System. Which, of course, is a... Fairly little known 8 bit system uh, that competed with the NES. At least, I, I guess it's probably little known because I don't think it had much of a market share in America. 
But uh, it was Sleep New Design, Alex Kid and Miracle World built in. That was one of their big hit games. Alex Kid was like the original Sega mascot. At least, uh, certainly the, the closest thing they had to a Sonic the Hedgehog, I believe. Uh, yeah, to be honest, I don't really know any of these games. Well, there's a port of uh, Castle of Illusion. Uh, Pac-Mania. Ah, uh, of course, Michael Jackson Jackson's Moonwalker. Well, I'm not exactly sure what that would have been like on the Master System. I thought uh, being on the Mega Drive was its big claim to fame. Uh, Super Monaco GP again. Golden Axe, okay. I, I don't really have much experience with the uh, Master System, so I, I don't really know how all these arcade ports went. Oh, and of course, a little bit about the Game Gear. Uh, the poor old Game Gear. <laughs> but that is all that. And then we have our manual. Now, being an Australian uh, Mega Drive release, we get this weird blue and white colouring. And these really tiny pictures and text. I have no idea why Australians got this. The, uh, usually, well, the UK manuals are certainly better. They always get a, a colourful front colour. Co front cover, I should say. But, uh, crush Dr. Robotnik. Dr. Ivo Robotnik, the mad scientist, is touching innocent animals and turning them into evil robots. Only one tough dude can put an end to the demented scientist's fiendish scheme. It's Sonic, the real cool hedgehog with a spiked haircut and power sneakers that give him super speed. Also, there you go, it is his shoes, according to the original Sonic 1 manual. Help Sonic fight hordes of metal maniacs and do the loop with a spin super Sonic spin attack. Speed down twisting tunnels and swing over dangerous booby traps. Leap across lava pits and dodge burning rocks and splash through the chilling waters in an underground cavern. And of course we have a lovely close-up of Dr. Ivor Robotnik himself. As well as a tiny little screenshot of going through a loop in, uh, not Spring Yard, uh, Starlight Zone, yeah. Oh, there we go, sorry, actually, if you're lucky, you can walk to a secret zone where you can spin around in a floating maze. Your greatest challenge works in a secret lab where you come face to face with Dr. Robotnik himself. Spin through, spin through space. Loop till you're dizzy, save the animals and become the superhero. Be Sonic, be Atomic. Oh yeah, this is 90s. Sonic Super Stunts. <laughs> uh, not too many Super Stunts there. And of course, this being the original Sonic for Hedgehog, you don't even have the Spin Dash in this game. Well, it's not, not a, uh, well, not a commandable Spin Dash anyway. Reach for the Rings. So of course, just explaining all the different mechanics in a suitably colourful way for a 90s manual. But, you know, you, you've really got to say, this looks an awful lot more like a modern manual. It's not very interesting to look at. We, we do have screenshots and things like that, but... Yeah, it's not particularly eye-catching, and obviously not a, thought, not a lot of thought went into the, yeah, the presentation of it. We have, of course, uh, a list of all the different zones in the game. So, Green Hill Zone, which I'm sure no one has forgotten, thanks to Sega. Uh, Marvel Zone... Spring Yard Zone, Labyrinth Zone, Starlight Zone, and of course, Scrap Brain Zone. Interesting, I say slippery metal floors. I don't remember anything being, uh, having ice physics in that, but maybe I'm just misremembering. And Secret Zone. So, of course, these special stages. Not that I think they actually mention what these uh, Chaos Emeralds do in the game. Okay, so that's all that. And then we actually do get a bit of an enemy roll call. So, Robotniks, Badniks. And uh, that's probably the first use of the term Badnik, actually. So, of course, we have uh, Chopper. Yeah, okay, so Crab Meat was the bigger one in Sonic 2. Uh, Motorbug. Where are you? There you are, Motorbug. Uh, uh, Crab Meat is number three. Oh, sorry, so Crab Meat is up there. Right. So, yeah, Chopper must be the, the fish. But, uh, Buzz Bombers, I guess, and, yep, all the usual names you'd expect to find. Jaws, Caterpillar. So that's kind of nice that they actually do put in some enemy names. And some enemy artwork. Sonic Survival Tips. Grab all the rings you can. Yep, that pretty much is it. <laughs> so, handling this cartridge, all the usual stuff, and, uh, that's it. So, yep, it's, it's got some good stuff, but it's also a pretty bare-bones basic manual. But that is your look at Sonic the Hedgehog on the Sega Mega Drive. Definitely not the best game in the series, but still fun to go back to every now and then, if nothing else, for Green Hill Zone. I don't really recommend the PAL version, though. The slowdown in that game... Uh, let, let's just say that when I played Sonic 1 initially, I was confused as to why Sonic was all supposed to be all about speed. <laughs> but thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.